Good morning, everyone. The art of teaching is the art of assisting discovery, rightly said by Mark Van Doren. And since I had already instilled the term teaching, let me quote for the one who teach, who are the mediators of education, are educators. Well, educators are the only people who lose sleep over other people's kids. Or shikshak, shikshak ke bagair aap sabhya aur samridh samaj ke kalpana bhi nahi kar sakte. Is baat par aap sab mere saath zaroor razi karenge. Good morning to one and all gathered here. I am Vishali from BA Second Year. Welcome you all for today's event. Empowering the youth with rightful thinking and as a college of education, rendering the nation building services in the society. Dev Samaj College of Education, Chandigarh, welcome you all for today's one day national webinar on the effective teaching strategies in education. Teaching, teaching is an instinctual art mindful of potential, craving of realizations, a pausing, seamless process. And to increase the potential with no apparent gaps or spaces, today we all have gathered here with our very eminent resource person, Mrs. Ramandeep Kaur. She is an early child educator, which makes up the base of the education, being a teacher trainer and an education blogger. She has a keen interest in writing, particularly the blogs on education. Not only yes, this, creative yes, side, yes. creative yes. side, she does carry with her. Yes. 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 My humble request to the participants to please yes. 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 My humble request to the participants. Please mute yourself. All right, so sorry for the inconvenience. So basically, I was telling about our very resource person for today. She has an epitomized version of perfect and really applaudable credentials, which might would take another session too. So I would really take it as my privilege to welcome her on today's national webinar. I welcome you, ma'am, and thank you for taking out your precious time for today's session. I also welcome all the dynamic faculty members of the college. As I can see the participants with us, from the Dave Samaj College and the faculty members, Dr. Madhi Goyal ma'am, Dr. Kiranjit ma'am, Manjeet ma'am, Shivani ma'am, Richa ma'am, as well as Rajvi ma'am. And I welcome all the wonderful participants as well as audience for today's event. Before starting up the event with the scheduled program, we will have our college prayer. And for this, I would request ma'am Rajvi to enhance our spiritual venture and optimism with college prayer. Over to you Rajvi ma'am. Thank you, Vishali. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Bhala chahna manushya matri ka ay insan baji. Kisi ki tu na chahani nahi nuksan baji. Bhala chahna Thank you. 
strong pillar for the institution ready level for supporting in every event and i can see the ba student manpreet present with ma'am for supporting her thank you manpreet for assisting ma'am now i would introduce the director of the director also is the yes thank you uh, my sincere apologies Uh, Narendra sir is also a part of music department. He also helps and assists in every event. Is ready to be available for every uh, the offline as well as online event. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would introduce the founder of True Religious Society of Saint Samaj, our most worshipful, illustrious founder, Param Pujne Bhagwan Sri Devatma Ji. 
teacher of the one true science, grounded religion for all mankind, with a vision and mission to imbibe evolutionary thoughts and scientific temper in the society. He has set a golden example by creating the strong sphere of education for girls to flourish and grow. He wanted to regenerate mankind and firmly believed that education, which is today's topic, in fact, could open the opportunity of enlightenment and independence of for women. Continuing with vision and mission of society's benefit and women education philosophy and ideology of Bhagwan Sri Devatmaji, I feel proud to share that our college has completed its 40 glorious years of existence with huge and tremendous number of years with wonderful achievements and the credit for making the institution count the splendid achievements with the promotion of social as well as ethical values propagated by Bhagwan Devatma Ji goes to our revered chairman, Sriman Nirmal Singh Titilin. For the formal welcome and introduction of sir, I would hand over the portal to our convener, Dr. Kiran Titma. Ma'am, I hand over the portal to you. Thank you, Shivani. A very good morning to all of you, a very warm and hearty welcome. I, Dr. Kiranjit Kaur, take this opportunity to welcome you all on the national webinar on effective teaching strategies in education. Firstly, and most importantly, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to Shrima Nirmal Singh Ji Dhillan, Secretary Dev Smaj, and Chairman Dev Smaj College of Education for their blessings and constant support to the college. Thank you very much, sir for all your blessings and kind support. We are equally grateful to Dr. Agnes Dhillan, Principal, Dev Smaj College of Education, Chandigarh. Thank you so much, ma'am, for providing us this opportunity to organize this webinar and always be a support to us. It is a great matter of happiness to welcome our resource person, Mrs. Ramandeep Kaur. Ramandeep Kaur is an early childhood educator, content designer, and a teacher trainer. An education blogger who speaks her mind about her open-mindedness in education. Ramandeep Kaur has trained almost 200 teachers in the last six months through various workshops, and she also got the privilege to be the finalist speaker at the Educator Speak an exclusive event for educators in Bangalore, School Groups 2021. Welcome Ramandeep Man on this one day national webinar. I also extend. Thank you so much for the kind welcome, Kiranjit Ma'am, uh, Vishali Ma'am and uh, Rajbir Ma'am. Uh, Kiranjit ma'am, you were saying something? Yes, Not yes. Yeah, yes. Okay, well, welcome Ramandeep ma'am on this one day national webinar. I also extend a warm welcome to the participants from various institutes. I ensure you all that you will thoroughly enjoy the session by Ramandeep madam. Through this webinar, you will made aware regarding effective teaching strategies in education. I again welcome all of you we will have a question answer session at the end of this session. You may write your questions in the chat box. Thank you very much. Over to Vishali. Thank you so much ma'am for the formal introduction. So without holding back any minute, I hand over the virtual portal to Mrs. Raman Kaur to highlight and focus how, what and what educators use or can use the approaches associated to improve their practice at all levels of experience and expertise and how basically the effective teaching strategies can increase young learners engagement in the classroom. For this, I hand over the portal to our very resource person, Mrs. Ramadeep Kaur ma'am. Over to you ma'am. Thank you so much Vishali ma'am. Uh, my heartfelt thanks for uh, arranging this work webinar. So uh, I would like to thank Kiranjit ma'am, Agnes ma'am uh, and whole uh, Desmarch College of Education uh, attending and giving webinar today takes me down to the memory lanes when I was also a student pursuing my BA and also uh, conducting the uh, meetings and uh, conducting the shows like this. 
so it is actually a quite special moment for me because i'm attached to this institution and uh, uh, i'm so glad that i was made a part of this uh, and i could uh, give my best to what i can today okay so effective teaching strategies teaching strategies comprises the principles and methods used for instruction the choice for teaching strategy or strategies to be used depends largely on the information or skill that is being taught and it may also be influenced by the learning style aptitude skill and enthusiasm of the students i hear and i forget i see and i believe i do and i understand so we are not only talking about teaching strategies as an educator we should be more focused on how innovative we can how every single day we can bring in something new to the classroom keeping in mind there are different set of children present in the class so learning by doing the more we do the more we portray ourselves into different roles while teaching is the best we can provide to the society what is strategy what is strategy well we all are in the new normal and what happened in the new normal we all went from offline to online was that a strategy what was the strategy in that case as an educator what we did in that particular case we used different methodologies we applied our learning we used various methods techniques to equip students with learning so that's how we equipped ourselves and came out of that situation that means strategy is in this term which means procedures and methods by which objectives or teaching are realized in the class strategy is more like something you would do in response to a particular problem just like i mentioned that we all were stuck in covid-19 situation but learning didn't stop a single day we all became used to the new normal whether it was a struggling student or a challenging environment our strategy our aim was to make learning reachable to masses to children to college goers although there are different approaches and there has been different lacunas in learning but as an educator as a teacher we applied and we used to the best of our knowledge different strategies still we are doing it every single day we are learning something new sometimes we get confused between strategy and method strategy as i just mentioned is actually something which is related to objective what is my objective of teaching today in the class my objective is that i have to build a relationship with the child to make him understand this particular topic for instance i want the child to be aware of family so my objective is that he should be aware of nuclear family he should be aware of joint family now what strategy i am going to use in this case i might use uh, videos by introducing the uh, class or i may also do a role play depending upon the strength of the class depending upon the size of the class depending upon the differences in children in class that is my strategy but what is the method then method is just the, your style of teaching which style of teaching are you going to use when you are going to teach a particular topic are you going to achieve that objective in that topic 
or not so my method could be anything it could be a lecture method which where the instructor is the primary source of the knowledge or i may use active learning strategies as well <clears throat> the instructor serves as a coach or facilitator guiding student through activities but letting the students take control of the learning event itself is what we all educators should be wary of these days we cannot be confine ourselves to old traditional methods it may work in some situation but it may not work in all the situation so for that matter we need to equip ourselves with professional different skill based learning that doesn't mean that we should be doing particular courses to enhance ourselves that is all dependent on individual to individual you can do it without also but it includes that you should have lot of strategies which can be applied in different situations for instance let's just take an example i have to do a reading session in a class and what strategies can i do for applying a reading session so let's see the first strategy okay so i am going to teach you today some reading all right let's start what is this this is a big book this is a big book what does it do oh my god it has lot of pictures and what are we going to see in this today let's see we are going to see this okay what is this it's a, it's a it's a it's a boy all right and what are these who are they they are they are okay they are boys that means this boy is one and there are many boys so that means it's a single boy and these are many boys so we can call them plural boys okay what about this it's a it's a fox it's a singular fox and what about these these are plural fox okay so there's a one strategy which teachers can use is introduce a concept through picture books or if a concept has already been introduced based on the prior knowledge of the students you can pick the interest of the students by taking the concept one step ahead in this particular <clears throat> slide you can see that the teacher is using different read aloud strategies the teacher is using different read aloud strategies where the teacher is showing the picture book to the child and in the second picture the teacher is sitting in small group of children we can do that also we can do read sessions read aloud sessions in small groups also not necessarily a big 10 to 20 people can just take 6 to 7 children in one group or there's another way of doing it you can enact in your session you can come into that character now in the first example i have used a big picture book and i have invited students i have gathered their attention by showing them the picture and 
in the second one i'm going to narrate a story a small story not complete one just to give an idea that this way also you can do all right so let's start <clears throat> okay so children how are you feeling today are you excited oh are you sad or are you happy okay very nice so if you are feeling great today i am going to narrate you a story of hippo hippo once upon a time there was a baby hippo and baby hippo was very excited you know why because baby hippo was going into the water somebody just mentioned that the slides are not moving so let me just share it once again yes ma'am Yes, ma'am. It's working now. Now is it fine? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So continuing with the read aloud strategies. In the first strategy, I have shown your picture book, and you can see in this slide the there are three different setup of the classroom. In the first setup, the teacher is showing a picture book to the child and asking the child that what is it? She is generating the interest in the child by showing picture book. in the second setting you can see there is a small group of children sitting with the teacher and the teacher is quite engrossed with the warm posture she has and she is taking the reading session in the third example you can see the teacher is wearing a hat which shows that she is into the character of the story and she is simultaneously writing something along with the storytelling so there are different approaches and i just narrated few lines of a story which you can begin if you don't have any resource you can use your voice as a resource you can use voice modulation so when i was i was making a hippo this thing i was enacting as if i was a hippo and i'm going into the water so there are different approaches which you can use while conducting reading sessions the role of the teacher is very important while taking sessions because it is all about the motivation and the attention you have to gather the attention of the students if the class is for 40 minutes 50 minutes 60 minutes whatever the time it is you have to plan your class the lesson accordingly you have to divide the time period of your class and break it into different parts so i was just mentioning that storytelling techniques may be very different so let me show you one more method suppose i am going to tell something about animals so i am going to show the children some of the animals okay let's start here comes the which animal is this which animal is this it is it is okay it is lion and what does lion do it roars okay oh my god and what about this which animal is this it is giraffe 
Okay. Is giraffe small or tall? It is tall. Okay. Which animal is this? Which animal is this? It is zebra. So this is also another technique which can be used by the teachers introducing any particular topic. Suppose I want to teach children uh, about animals, about land animals and then water animals. So I can use this resource by generating the interest in the class. I can also use this resource as a storytelling technique. If I'm reciting a story or I'm reciting a poem or narrating a story on animals, I can use it as an extended activity. That means I can use it for different kind of techniques. We can also imbibe puppet show in the class. Puppet show is also very interesting. It all depends upon the teacher, how she conducts the class. If she is very good with the voice modulation, definitely one should use that particular ability of yours and imbibe that in class. And as far as the ability of the teacher is concerned, so is the teaching resource. The right resource is going to add value to the teaching. If you do not have a right resource, doesn't matter. You can create the right resource in no matter of time. So teacher, role of a teacher is not only confined to what it was many years before, just a friend philosopher guide, but rather than more, more than that, should be advisor, organizer, motivator, guide, obviously, evaluator and the most and most important is facilitator facilitator means someone who facilitates we don't have to do things for children we have to act as a facilitator facilitator have to push the children gently that yes you can do this yes the learning can happen that way too we can learn this concept by this approach too. So when we talk about strategies, the first and foremost thing is our written document. That means our plan. What is plan? What is a lesson plan? Lesson plan, which you should be carrying, we should be having when you are entering into the class to teach something. It is just like a canvas. And teacher is the artist. So think like that. If you are an artist and you have to paint the canvas, how would it be? You want to make it a beautiful one or just an average one? Obviously, everybody wants it to be have a beautiful, flawless, lesser plan. So for that, we should be using different approaches, different strategies. Because lesson plan is a document which communicates to you. It gives you an idea what you are going to teach in the class. Obviously, we have to be, do a lot of planning. I would say micro planning at our level first and then keeping children in mind. We should be doing a lot of planning and not panicking at the last moment that we are unable to teach this particular concept because we have not worked on that. We have not done planning on that. Good lesson plan is actually based on four things. Interest and ability of the students. Suppose we want to take a concept which caters to magnets. So I have to being a teacher, I have to make be aware my class students size and their prior knowledge and abilities. Some students may be very good learners. They may grasp the things if you teach them in a direct learning method. But some students may not be able to grasp things the way others do. So what do you do in that case? You have to have uh, okay, see the interest and strengths of your children and your beliefs about teaching and learning. 
you should be very much confident that you will be able to take this concept further even if there are different set of class children class children different set which i mean to say is some may be good learners some may be slow learners some may not understand the text easily they may understand the visual impacts easily and last but not least your openness to change your plan there might be chances that your plan may fail at times your plan may fail how will it fail you are not able to give that particular concept to the child it may fail let me show you some examples of bad lesson plans and good lesson plans okay so imagine i'm entering a class where the students are about 25 to 30 and the class is of grade 2 children grade 3 children and today i'm going to take up a concept of maths keeping in mind the children have some knowledge of magnets because they see magnets in their house on their refrigerator so keeping that thing in mind i have prepared a lesson plan so let me enact it for you all right let's children today we are going to learn about magnets please open your book on page number 59 all right so um, i want Okay, the child who's sitting on the first bench. What's your name? Okay, Rudra. Rudra, can you please read the page number fifty-eight, first sentence? Okay. Now Rudra will start te- start um, reading the sentence, and all the children, half of them, will not even listen, and some of them will not even understand. So, was that a good lesson plan or a bad lesson plan? obviously it's not a good lesson plan where the concept is not delivered that is not at all a good lesson plan now my second approach how would i deliver this concept to a class of grade 2 children so i am entering the class and i am carrying some resources with me which i carried from my home only because i didn't have the time to make it so <laughs> I could hear some background noise. All right. So I'm carrying this plate with me, and I also have some materials with me. All right, children. Let's start the class. I have something very exciting to show you today. and i'm taking another material okay what is this this is cotton oh it is not sticking you know what this is right okay let me try with the paper oh again it is not sticking so this was another example of the same concept magnets where i used resources i invited children with a warm gesture created their interest that today we are going to learn something exciting so using those kind of uh, adjectives in the class is also very important we can't be uh, carrying uh, a very low attitude and teach the class the role uh, we have to be a role model first and foremost and secondly if we can most of the time we should be showing things to the children that means real examples so now i have generated the interest by showing this example of material which gets stuck to the that particular tray now immediately some students might know that these are magnets but some students may not know but by actually watching what i was doing 
they would definitely ask what is happening so then my lesson has been conducted successfully i am able to deliver my concept and in the end i can conclude by saying that these are materials which are magnetic which gets stuck to the gets stuck to the plate are magnetic materials doctor the key components of a lesson plan whenever we are carrying a lesson plan with us that is a document where we are going to teach the children we should be aware that we should having different objective in mind profile profile means the topic which we are going to teach for instance i just taught about magnets so that was my topic what was my objective hi Huh? I can hear some background noise. Uh, if I, uh, somebody is unmuting, please mute hey, yourself. B. J. C. Please mute yourself. I can hear some background noise. Mute. कर लीजिए. please mute yourself thank you okay coming back again to the components of lesson plan lesson plan should include the topic first first and foremost so my topic was magnets i was making aware of the children magnetic materials and non magnetic materials my objective was clear that i am going to deliver that particular concept in this particular time materials and equipments materials and equipments which whatever you can think of it based on the topic i could take the material from the home or if it is available in the school you can utilize that also and the procedure my procedure was i i started the topic by not uh, opening the book i started the topic with showing something by showing something by demonstrating by actually doing something which was easier for me to take the class further and how i am going to assess them based on that topic if i am teaching magnetism i can assess them by giving a, a worksheet later on or i can i can plan a quiz for them where i can use different questions like which are the materials which gets attracted those are magnetic and those are non magnetic or i can use a collaborative thinking approach where i can collaborate children and share some activity with them so this is how we should have a plan in our mind just like i told you that lesson plan is just like a canvas and we are the artist it is just we have to assemble the pieces of puzzles together which are different students are different classrooms are different but it's the role of the teacher who can imbibe her learning and her values to the class by implementing an effective lesson plan when we talk about objectives <clears throat> objective should be very much specific that means you should have a clear objective in mind that today i am going to teach this concept in the class magnetism and non magnetism was it measurable was i able to see the response of the children because i was asking questions the children were involved i was asking them i was showing them simultaneously i was speaking i was using resources so my objective was measurable was it attainable yes of course it was attainable because i was engrossed in what i was teaching it was active learning happening i was not giving children just a book to read open this this page and read and that's it the class is over no no material no visual aid nothing my goal is not attainable in that case result oriented i have to complete this topic in two days i cannot extend this topic to a 15 days or maybe a month no that is what i have to plan i have to be result oriented and of course time bound my class time is 40 minutes 
within 40 minutes, I have to complete the topic, making sure that these objectives are met. So the key elements of lesson plans is transition, of course. Suppose that in the first case where the teacher was just opening the book and asking children to read. And in the end, she realizes that the students could not understand anything. So the best thing for her to do is to be flexible enough to change her lesson plan. That's the beauty of the lesson plan. It should be flexible. If you think that you failed in this particular approach, apply another approach. If you're not able to demonstrate, show a video. If you're not able to show a video, do a role play. If you're not able to do role play, do inquiry based questions, ask questions, brainstorm. But use time, variety and be precise. You, can, you cannot teach five, six concepts at a time. Suppose my goal was clear that I have to teach students magnets and what is the difference between magnetic and non-magnetic material. My goal was not to make them aware of the magnetic field and some other experiments related to that. That I will plan later. If one goal is achieved, I can move to the next, next one. That should be my plan. It should be easy to follow. The steps should be broken down. A huge chunk of lesson plan should be divided, should be broken down into small pieces, just like puzzle I mentioned. <clears throat> Obviously, if the class is not settled, you won't be able to take the class, any concept. So there comes the role of classroom management also, which also a teacher uh, uh, has to be wary of what different strategy she can use to make the class set it. If the class is noisy, you cannot teach anything in the class. You have to motivate children and hint to the theme. So I was showing them the magnets and I was simultaneously Creating, a, creating an excitement in the class that today we are going to do something exciting. If my tone is like this, okay, children, open base this. Today we are going to read this. I'm sure half of the class would sleep by the time I would read, go to the second sentence. So that way we are not doing justice to the students and obviously to the education. <clears throat> When we talk about instructional input, what instructions and what inputs we can give, that means what skill do we have or by the time we can enhance that skill in ours. Suppose a teacher who is a very good singer, she can sing beautiful rhymes in the class and teach the topic because that is something which she has. And later on, she can equip with different materials. So half of the work is done through that particular thing only. Doesn't matter. Everybody can't be a good singer. Everybody doesn't have the same skill set. But yes, that we have to learn. Whatever we are good at, we should be using that skill. Because our main motto is to present the information by whatever mean it is. If we talk about college students, mostly we follow lecture methods. But in some subjects like science, maths, we also do a lot of demonstrations. In science, we take children to the science lab. Even these days, I've seen schools um, getting used to the maths lab also. They take children to the maths lab where they uh, make children play with this different kind of material so that the children's interest is raised. Abacus, blocks, many materials. They give shapes, felt, felt shapes. They give it to the children demonstrations which i just mentioned a lot of pictures there has been a research which share, which shares that the more pictures we show in the class that means the more uh, graphical information the that is the more retain is done for the students the retention is better in that particular case rather than just text so try to incorporate different pictures different visual visual aids in the class. Mm -hmm. 
show the students you we have to lead the example by themselves as far as modeling is concerned model a good behavior first yourself first and foremost use different resources utilize resources if if the resource is costly doesn't matter think out of the box and create resources because your half of the work is done if you show resources if you show real life examples to the children more displays learning materials which are typically displayed they are used in an instructional setting just like i mentioned pictures written materials spoken words maps etc which can be used as display flannel boards anything and obviously activities we have to plan activities in a particular lesson plan the more activities we plan the more success we get in the lesson plan it, it, activities doesn't mean we have to every day do you know utilize our time in the activity only we have to plan that's what the strategy comes into play our lesson plan should have activity time in the lesson plan itself if the class we are going to conduct and we have 15 minutes in hand so first 10 minutes we should interact with the children then we should make them aware create an interest what we are going to do today we can do an activity today and do a feedback tomorrow feedback in the sense we can do a related extended activity which involves writing part the next day suppose i introduce magnetic uh, materials to you today so tomorrow my approach would be i would give you something in written where you can perform something where you can perform the quiz or maybe you can do a coloring activity you can color the magnetic material green and color the non magnetic materials red <clears throat> integration of technology in the classroom that is actually uh, what helps a teacher to go a long way if she utilizes and i am sure uh, uh, ever since we have been into online teaching most of the teachers have become tech savvy and uh, they uh, they are using uh, this opportunity of using uh, powerpoint presentations projectors and obviously internet is where we can gather most insights from and smart board is also being used in most of the schools today not all i would say but yes smart boards are also being used so we should be integrating our lesson plan keeping in mind the technology a computer teacher may get <clears throat> different insights by using these technologies even not even computer teacher all the subject teachers may get different learnings by using technology and integrating in our classrooms it's just we have to think how effectively we can use that particular resource in the class so after all this how do we bring the lesson plan to an end we have to revise what we have learned today just tie everything together just key points the keywords which we should which we used in the class we should be using it up and finally evaluating how will we come to know whether a child has understood the concept or not that is very important part of the lesson plan if you does not if the lesson plan does not have evaluation the reflection how we are going to um, how we come to know that the student has learned this particular concept or not for that matter we can use various strategies we can use demonstration which i told you earlier the one which i used in the magnet i actually used inquiry also because i was asking questions cooperative learning where we can group the children in a group of 5 in a group of 6 or even a larger group also and integrative technique integrative technique is nothing but imbibing certain themes in the class that is thematic classrooms many schools these days follow different curriculums an ib teacher has to equip, equip with different techniques 
a cbse curriculum teacher would have to have different techniques so based on that we should be wary of the different techniques which are being taught and we should equip ourselves like for example in integrative technique the last one which is there the the theme is community helpers community helpers is a topic where we give the opportunity of the to the children to enact also we conduct show and tell we ask them to become a community helper and speak about them it gives a chance an opportunity to the child to participate to enhance his vocabulary skills so most of the schools have applied these kind of approaches there are many other approaches also which can be imbibed most of the approaches which are being used are teacher directed and some are student directed so teacher directed just like it's like lecture method interactive classroom flipped classroom and student directed is where student is involved why we call it student directed is where the student is the central point when we are making our lesson plan the strategy which we should keep in mind is to keep student in the center will my student be able to understand if i introduce the concept like this which which technique can i use collaborative shall i make the group of 5 shall i make the group of 10 so these kind of questions should be there in your mind while you plan a particular topic on lesson plan lecture method is best used in college going students in higher grades but in lecture method also we can imbibe some of the time in showing some visuals utilizing the lecture method along with the collaborative learning project based learning where we can give project to the children you have to search on this particular topic this is your group everything you have to do it yourself we make groups that is also where the teacher is giving command and the students are doing things on their own before applying the approaches the things which teacher should take into account is first and foremost the age of the students whether you are going to take the class of 5 year 6 year or grade 9 10 or you are going to a college teaching to a college students the setting of the class whether it is a cbsc curriculum it's an ib curriculum or it's a normal curriculum what's the setting of the class the length of the class how uh, what's the strength of the class whether it is 40 50 20 curriculum i just mentioned what is the demand of the curriculum the curriculum demands to have an integrative approach the curriculum demands the teachers to have a demonstrative approach and obviously different teaching aids teaching aids is the one thing where it can be used in any setting whether you have the resources whether you have the technology with you or not but a teacher can be creative enough to utilize the resources even best out of waste can be creative reduce reuse recycle create resources out of waste that also can be done so you can see different strategies over here in the first case you can see the teacher is taking uh, she is showing something in the class she has written uh, uh, on the board it's kind of a lecture method she is delivering and she is involving students also she is blended the classroom in the second example the teacher is sitting with a group of children the setting is different here she is engaged in the children with some blocks and just including a playway method in the third setting the teacher is using a whiteboard and she is writing something on the board 
And in the fourth example, you can see there are students who, who some questioning is being done, and they are also elder students. So teacher centered is mostly the lecture style. Demonstrator or coach style, where you show knowledge, include activities and demonstrations. Facilitator or activity style, which promotes learning, self-actualization and critical thinking skills. If we don't give opportunity to the students to think, we can't expect them to be critical thinkers. That's the future of 21st century skills. We want our children to think, to think critically. For that, we need to provide them the opportunities. We can't just tell them that this is what we are going to learn today. You have, we have to make the topic interesting. Delegator or group style, it's mostly used for lab activities and peer feedback activities. <clears throat> where the children are divided into groups, they are given a particular topic to research on, or they are made a group in the lab itself that you are going to conduct this particular experiment. Uh, these days I've seen online setting also, teachers are doing this. I recently uh, went into one of the schools and uh, um, where I was a part of the uh, resource person. And there they have used this as a, beautifully as an online setup of on Teams. In the breakout rooms, they have divided the children into groups. So there was a group of children of six in each particular group, and they were given one experiment to perform. So the, the students have divided the task among themselves. One, uh, one student was preparing the presentation, but all the others were preparing different slides, what they are going to do. One teacher, one student is going to present the experiment, the other is going to speak the experiment. The third is going to tell the significance. So it is all about that creativity and the opportunity which we have. There is no end to learning and no end to <clears throat> creativity. Hybrid or blended style. This is what the 21st century skill is called for we should be going in a blended style, lecture style along with demonstrator or activity style, delegator style and showing lot of visual aids. We have to blend the classroom. Blend is nothing but you have to get adjusted to the situation, to the environment. Just like chameleon. Chameleon kya karta hai? What does it do? It gets changes its color with the surroundings. Some other animals also do. That's called camouflage. So we can also be a good blender in that case. We can blend our teachings, matching the teaching personality and interest with students' needs. As I just mentioned, that active, active learning is the need of the hour today. 21st century demands active learning from the students and obviously from the teacher. So active learning involves a lot of strategies. It can be like journal writing or a problem solving attitude where we are given a problem and we solve that problem together. Group discussion, of course, the role play which I just mentioned about the integrative theme that was when the children have become community helpers. They are enacting the role of a community helper. They have actually become a policeman or a doctor and enacting their roles. So that way learning will be faster. This we have already done. Why cooperative and collaborative learning? <clears throat> so I, as I just mentioned that there is a demand for 21st century skills. 
since there has been a paradigm shift of education which calls for departure from traditional teaching methods which are primarily teacher centered into student centered learning environment students should be centered cooperative can be we can give a task to a group of students and where each and every child is responsible for his particular task cooperative learning is mostly done in schools it can uh, involve certain activities like think and pair where we divide the children into group of two suppose we just give body part topic to a child and we ask child to discuss it with your partner about the body parts and then after 10 to 15 minutes come and share what you have discussed that's a cooperative learning it is mostly used in children with school age children whereas collaborative learning collaborative learning is where we it's a project based learning where we have divided the activity in groups and the role of the teacher is just they have divided the activity rest everything student is doing researching from researching the topic to delegation and to expressing to present the topic everything is being done by student that's a collaborative learning that's group learning both of them are group learning but with a different setting with a different objective in the cooperative learning the role of the teacher is more there because the teacher has divided and it is time bound collaborative learning is not that particular time bound and the teacher's role is also not that huge it's 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 limited but yes both approaches can be used in the 21st century skills active learning so lesson planning strategies goal setting plan act assess and reflect what is my goal for today i have to deliver this topic to this much students what is my plan how do i go about it do i prepare something okay 40 minutes 10 minutes i'm going to utilize by interacting with the children 20 minutes i'm going to cover the content which is given to me a particular topic act how i'm going to bring in activities in that particular topic whether i'm going to conduct an activity or whether i'm going to show a video or maybe a pictorial thing after all this how i'm going to assess the children based on what what they have learned what how i'm going to assess them and then in the end reflect reflect what they have learned if you feel that the learning has not been achieved then your lesson plan should be flexible enough to achieve a particular goal all right <clears throat> just sharing an example of a lesson plans around us this is the lesson plan which we have to make and the content is we have to distinguish between trees shrubs herbs and climbers and the topic is how the plants are useful to us as well so this is our content this is our profile how we are going to plan about it these all are the skills which we want children to dwell through this communicate clearly think creatively collaborate we want them to observe by comparing and contrasting by analyzing classifying communicating and organizing what could be the best approach so suppose i am going to teach this i enter the class with this topic in my hand and i have prepared a lesson plan <clears throat> how can i start the class first i will interact with the children obviously uh, because that's also part of uh, 
the plan i cannot just go into the class and start class this 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 we are going to start this today nobody is going to listen to us so first we have to make a rapo with the class so 10 minutes with that after that what do we do plants the topic brainstorm can i show plants to the class can i bring a plant and show it to the class why not yes or other way can i plan a trip for the class can i take them to the nursery a nearby nursery or not even if nursery why not school garden can i take them to the school garden yes that's a brilliant idea let's take them this is how you do planning with other teachers brainstorm that's called brainstorming okay so brainstorming helps us to teach the topic effectively so what i am going to do in this case i will take the children to the school garden and the students will actually see different kinds of plants they will see some plants are short some are tall some uses support to climb for example our money plant money plant ko support chahiye climb karne ke liye that's they are called climbers then there are trees which have solid roots but not every plant is a tree some are herbs which are very small and herbs we use in our kitchen also that's how you relate to real life things to the topic <clears throat> later on when we we have introduced this concept as an activity we can ask children to make a scrapbook where it they themselves go visit a garden nearby or if they have a lawn at their place or they can plan their visit with their family members it's not that difficult they can gather some of the leaves of the plant and they can create a scrapbook so this way this is a smart way of working i have shown them the real examples i have given them this activity to do it themselves and bring that scrapbook in the class on this particular day and my job is half done now i will share some examples of what are shrubs what are climbers what are herbs what are trees so that way my approach was to teach a topic on plants <clears throat> let's take one one other topic materials around us suppose i have to teach this material this topic i have received and i have to present this topic to the class how do i do it all right let's do brainstorming first with other teachers obviously if you don't do brainstorming with other teachers do it with students but <clears throat> you can't show them that you are also learning yourself brainstorming has to be different approaches as well if you are doing with the teacher differently with the student differently all right everyone let's look around ourselves wherever you are sitting in the classroom can we see different things in the class okay what is there on the desk okay let me just pick it up okay i have this with me oh it's a pencil okay and then i have this highlighter with me okay then i have this rubber with me then i have this wooden block with me okay i have one more thing this is a oh this is cotton okay but what are all these what are all these these are materials do they all look same no they all look different cotton is very soft i can feel the softness whereas wood is 
heart. So that ways we can take this topic, materials around us and their properties. There are different kinds of materials which we see on everyday basis. Paper, wool, plastic, leather. And after generating this interest, we can take a chart like this and hand the sheet to the children. Suppose we give children wood, then sponge, sponge I don't have, I'm using cotton, rubber and a paper. So I'm providing these four things to the child and I'm giving this sheet to the child and I'm distributing the shield to all the tables, asking children to mention the color. So they will see the color, the color is, color of the wood is. So that's how we can involve children in the class by showing, touching, and observing. They are observing and they are writing the observations themselves. The texture, we have given them a lot of opportunities to explore in this case. We didn't go anywhere outside in the class this time. Whatever was there in the class, we utilized that. So this we have already discussed about different teaching strategies. So uh, we have a few more minutes left. I'll just, I'll just wind up in five minutes. So after the uh, recognition of the materials, later on we can <clears throat> use a Venn diagram. Although it is uh, the Venn diagram of a transparent and rigid material, which I didn't introduce, but it's just an example that we can take hard and soft also. Hard, what were the hard materials to so those pictures child can put over there? What are the soft materials the child will put over there? Or maybe you can do it a coloring part also. The child can color the hard part and do not color the soft material. So that is an integration approach where I have shown the materials. I have demonstrated children have themselves uh, use the materials. They have written their observations. They have, they were engaged. And later on, I have reflected that how much they have learned by giving them this activity in, uh, as an observation. Whether they are able to distinguish between hard and soft, different kind of materials. 21st century skills, as I mentioned in the beginning of the session also, that the need of the hour is the 21st century skills. Although we have been doing a lot of skills which were teacher-centered, but these days, most of the skills which demand is of student-centered. And obviously, a better balance of both is where the blended teaching comes into practice. Five E's which we can keep it in our mind is engage. Engage children as much as you can. Then explore, obviously explore and explain. Elaborate, elaborate what was taught. Okay, materials, different kind of materials. Take next concept after you feel that the children are now able to understand that there are materials. Then take another concept, different kind of materials. Hard and soft. Then next step transparent, translucent, whatever the category of materials and then evaluate. I evaluated on the basis of Venn diagram or by asking questions, by ask, by performing quiz, by conducting show and tell. So that is my approach. How do I evaluate the children? <clears throat> Obviously, there is no best method. We can use a combination of strategies. And the best thing is to do is blended teaching, which is actually allows us to cater all different category of students.
this we have already done about teaching strategy, subject matter, and group size. One last thing which I would like to mention is uh, uh, keeping our learning style and teaching style. We also have to keep in mind the learner's style also. Some may learn things fast by visualizing. Some, some may not able to visualize. They can hear things. They are good listeners. And some are kinesthetic learners. Like, for example, if I talk about myself, if I'm given something to read about of two, three pages, I think I would better understand better in a video form where, where I can see performance, where I can see that experiment to be performed. So we don't have time for another lesson plan. I, I'll just wind up. <clears throat> These are some of the approaches which you, which uh, some teachers use during online classes. They create these kind of slides, where, which is called champs. Raise your hand to speak. H stands for try yourself first, because in online teaching, the challenges are different. Or students start speaking continuously. So where the classroom management comes into play. Everybody cannot speak together. They are the... Um, uh, Concept of the class cannot be delivered effectively. Some more topics, but we are uh, almost uh, done with the time. So in the end, I would like to conclude that if we need to serve the planet as an educator, we need to reflect the planet. I would like uh, want to have some questions. Somebody wants to ask questions, please ask. Each and every skill is so incredibly depicted. And had it been an offline event, the auditorium would have echoed with a huge round of applause for you, ma'am. So basically, um, we can actually do with this virtual clap we have this option on the Zoom. So whosoever is able to do that, we are most welcome. So now comes a question and session for all the participants. So all of you are requested to drop their questions in the chat box and we will question the resource person with the same. I actually feel that everything has been crystal clear while depicting because it was so nicely depicted, ma'am, the things you had already kept handy was the most effective among all the learners who, you know, learn effectively, in fact, with the audiovisual aid. So we have the chat box open, the portal is open. Uh, so basically, ma'am, uh, there's this question from the audience that uh, how can you give examples of collaborative and cooperative learning? Yes, so this is very interesting, uh, very nice question. Collabor uh, cooperative learning, as I mentioned, was, is mostly used in a school setting, wherein a teacher divides the class into small groups. For instance, I divide the class, uh, I can divide the class into a group of two also, that is called think, pair and share. I'm giving, I'm given a task to students where I'm given them that uh, you have to discuss about your families. So two students pair, they talk to among talk to uh, themselves that uh, how many members are there in your family? What is a family? They, they discuss among themselves. Mm -hmm. That is, they think, then they pair, and then one of them will share what they have discussed. I'm introducing a topic called family. So like this. This is an example of cooperative learning. Here, the role of the teacher also comes into play, and there is a time bound. I'm giving you 10 minutes, come back and present your topic. Whereas collaborative learning is, it can be whole class learning also where I can involve the class into picture reading where all the class is sitting together in one group only. That can also be a collaborative learning. Also collaborative learning is project based. I have given a project to a children. I have given you to perform this experiment and your date is the after tomorrow. 
so children will do everything on their own they will collaborate the role of the teacher is less here in cooperative learning the role of the teacher is more in collaborative learning students are doing everything on their own so collaborative learning is mostly done uh, with a higher age students our education ke is in my mana collaborate all right if there is any other question or query uh, a resource person is available to give the proper answers as well as to clear the minds but eventually i will definitely tell that everything was so much clear uh, right okay so is there anyone who could or who want to ask anything i think i think everything is uh, clear ma'am so at the end or before you know wrapping up the session i would say what a wonderful delightful amazing and all the relatable synonyms for the session and to now some of the session as well as to formally thank you uh, basically we have with us our uh, faculty member manjeet ma'am yes so we have with us manjeet ma'am to formally thank the resource person ma'am i hand over the portal to you good afternoon to all uh, i am here to present formal vote of thanks to our learned resource person mrs ramandeep kaur uh the childhood educator from bengaluru alumni of our college ma'am you have very well tried to focus our attention towards the contemporary methodologies to teach in a very interesting way you have very beautifully differentiated between a method and strategy so we really need to enhance our skill based learning to motivate the students and capture their attention uh very well explained read aloud strategies like six to seven children should be there in a group so through various picture books by narrating a story so it was all very interesting you used skill of stimulus variation technique in a very effective manner so we really appreciate for that even we as teacher educators learned a lot from you <clears throat> so it was a wonderful session and you beautifully used the voice modulation technique that that is rising intonation falling intonation laying proper stress and uh, rhythm in your teaching so we are really grateful to you and i hope everybody has enjoyed this lesson this session very well thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you so much for the kind words is there a time for the last question because we have got this question from the audience yes so the question, the question is how should we handle the class in a continuous classroom many cultural groups yes that is also very relevant question um, if we have uh, children of different abilities uh, there are certain children who are autistic who are uh, who cannot learn the way traditional uh, conventional uh, uh, teachers do but yes more uh, activity based learning helps in that particular case give them lot of play give them lot of uh, uh, visuals uh, give them lot of uh, uh, play way methods which uh which are learned best in that particular methods and also if there are different cultural groups groups also that way we can divide the children in certain groups initially we can make the group homogeneous for example if, if there are different cultural groups if they are not comfortable interacting with another children we can create homogeneous group first where the children all the children are of same capability but when we feel that that achieve we have achieved success in that particular case then slowly and gradually we can 
create a heterogeneous group also where one to two children are of a different culture and other are different that way uh, mingling of the uh, students will there will be there and there will be a lot of learning and takeaways from both of them all right all right so wonderfully explained by a very so person so with this we will wrap the session for today and i as a student organizer from my end i would actually thank the resource person for imbibing these skills use in a wide respect from even the kindergartners to college going students through your lecture and i am very sure that every one of us are crystal clear with the skills and have attained the knowledge being imparted from your end now and as a reflection uh, i must tell you that from youtube chat box even from the zoom chat box in fact from the whatsapp group everyone was so much inspired as well as they were giving good and positive reflections of the whole uh, lecture and as i told had you been into this offline session the audience had actually given up the great round of applause for you and uh, with this i would actually give up the reaction from my side as a great round of applause thank you so much ma'am thank you vishali ma'am thank you kiranjit ma'am thank you manjeet ma'am and uh, thank you agnes ma'am for having me and uh, making me part of this webinar it was it, it was actually a delightful day and uh, i am glad that i could deliver the uh, the topic in uh, this particular time and as they say that sweet are the uses of adversity so although we are all in this particular situation but yes there uh, there are certain pros also we can be connected even no matter where we are so that's the beauty of uh, online thank, thank you, you so and uh, i would like to thank all the participants for the registration as well as being a participant whole of the time i must tell that the zoom was always a full of 100 participants and people were watching from youtube as well and they were interacting in the chat box so i without the audience nothing is actually possible so great round of applause for the audience and i would yes. like to thank the eminent faculty of saint mat college for organizing this session and being a moderator for the day thank you very much and have a nice day to all of you thank you